That's incredible. Get back to King's Landing. I'm not abandoning my army. You're the commander, not a damn infantry man. Those fuckers are about to swamp us. We can hold them off. fighters and look at this look at the scale of this holy god that's amazing wow Question, but do dragons have unlimited amounts of fire? Do they feel like recharge? I can't shoot with one hand. Come on! Kill Braun. I will stop watching this show. Oh, 
his gold. Oh my. Don't kill Braun! Seriously, I'm gonna be so angry. then making it happen is near impossible. Damn, Thrones, you are good. <laughs> what a goddess. Is Ron gonna take out a dragon? Braun is kind of like Robert Shaw in Jaws. He's kind of like Quint. He has been this whole time. And I know it's Roy Scheider's line, but if Braun says smile, you son of a bitch, as he shoots a dragon. Sure. I mean, <laughs> he jumped and <laughs> knocked him off a horse and dodged dragon fire. <laughs> Pretty dramatic. <laughs> Pretty dramatic. I mean, that. Okay, so, first half, the first half of the Spoils of War, I actually, I actually jotted down, like, so far, not much happening. People ask what's on the notes. Sometimes I just take pace of, like, how much stuff is actually happening in these episodes. And I kind of pointed out that, like, 
not a whole heck of a lot is happening. But in 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 typical Thrones fashion, when there is a big battle to come, it's usually reserved for the second half of the episode, and that was a big battle. That was the the might uh, and and pure force of Daenerys's dragons unleashed on the Lannister army, which up till that point has been notching the majority of the victories in this battle. And uh, what's what's interesting to me is that uh, this season, since Danny's landed in Westeros, the season, um, the emphasis of the season, the point of the season has been uh, Targaryens in Danny versus Lannisters in Cersei, right? And those two going at each other and Danny getting um, forces to align with her uh, and and Cersei picking them off one at a time. Because strategically, she's better at this. Uh, she's Tywin Lannister's daughter, and she is going to be better at military maneuvers than Danny is, he, d- despite what Danny's learned. And Danny kind of realizes and says to Tyrion, "Like, look, your strategy's failed, and and everything you sort of told me to do uh, has has backfired on us to the point where she questions his loyalty. To the point where she actually says to him, maybe you just don't want to hurt your your family.'" And we see a bit of that later when Tyrion sees the devastation that's been uh, brought to his his brother Jaime and and their forces. He, he there's sorrow in uh, Tyrion in that he you know he's responsible for for this this devastation. So Danny gets what looks to be a, a much needed victory against these forces, although the episode ends before the battle is fully completed. Um, but yeah, her dragons have wrecked havoc. Um, And the irony of that is that all they're doing in the course of this battle is depleting whatever forces they have that they're going to need in the ultimate great war, which again, as an audience member, I'm siding with Jon Snow and I'm telling you that Jon is right and the Night King is coming. Um, And it's almost like if everyone could just get to Bran, if Brandon could just tell people what he knows is happening... um, I'd say maybe they'd listen, but I, I know these people and they won't. They're not going to listen. They're so obsessed with the Iron Throne that uh, the Dothraki and the Lannister army just hacked away at each other and the dragons set the armies ablaze. And that's just more good men that you're not going to be able to use in the battle that you ultimately need the men for. Um, some significant emotional turns in this episode. Arya comes back home, um, shows off. So she and Sansa have a great conversation about, like, my journey was rough and my journey was rough. And someday maybe we'll talk about it. Like, someday we'll share. But Sansa gets to see how much her sister has changed when when Arya takes on uh, Brienne and holds her own. More than holds her own. Um, and knowing that Brienne is uh, one of the best warriors that we've seen on this show before, conveyed to us by the fantastic battle that she had with the Hound and Lord knows what season that was at this point shows Sansa, you know, that her sister is not one to be messed with. And Bran knows a lot more about Arya too because he's essentially watched her journey from afar and probably sees where her journey is going to go. And so he gives the dagger that Littlefinger hands over to her, gives it to Arya. She uses it instantly in the battle against Brienne to show that she's um, going to be very adept at using that that weapon. So that was interesting. And then Danny and John, when they're looking at the mine of the dragon glass, John shows these cave paintings that show that the battle against the um, Night King and his forces has dated back centuries. They see the the first men and the children of the forest and how they were um, allies at one point in the battle against the Night King. But um, but again, I, I'll, I'll point out the fact that the, the big takeaway from this is while the battle of the five kingdoms uh, or seven kingdoms, or five kings, or the battle for the Iron Throne. While it wages on, all they're doing is depleting the um, the resources and the men and the weapons and the soldiers that they're going to have in a much larger battle <laughs> that they're going to need. Um, I'll take a minute out here. Sometimes I get asked occasionally, like, who's my favorite character? And I'm still Team Tyrion, although, you know, Tyrion is sort of from the minute he became hand of the queen for Danny, uh, he hasn't been as involved in the politics of King's Landing, and he's kind of been more of a support than a than a main character who has his own storylines to play out. So I, I love Peter Dinklage and I love Tyrion, but if I had to pick a side character who's not one of the mains, um, who I really love, it's Bronn. Bronn is just fantastic. 
and he gets such a moment in this one. And again, I related him to Quint from Jaws, and I guarantee that that the way that they played that was a nod to Spielberg and to uh, Robert Shaw. Although again, like it's, I know it's Roy Scheider who um, takes the final shot at Bruce the Shark, but but the way that Braun has been carrying himself this entire show suddenly comes to light that he's been doing Robert Shaw this entire time. And that's, that makes me love him even more. So uh, we'll see who survives that um, flame dodge <laughs> as Braun. That was, that was Braun, wasn't it? Knocks Jamie off of his horse, saves Jamie fucking Lannister. Uh, and, uh, and then they, uh, J- Jamie sinks to the bottom, but you know, Daenerys now sees that they do have a weapon that can be used against her dragons. Um, the Lannisters now see the the force and the might of dragons and what Danny can bring. And uh, will they just continue to to hack away at each other until no one's left standing, giving Jon half of an army left to fight the Night King, or um, or will something else happen to swing season seven's momentum in a different direction? We will find out when uh, episode five of season seven returns. Spoils of War, that, that's a great battle. Um, I don't know where it ranks. Where <sighs> Hard Home to me is still, that's still up there. Uh, Spoils of War goes above Blackwater. Um, battle of the Bastards goes above Blackwater. R- right now, to me, I guess it's it's Hard Home, it's Battle of the Bastards. Um, it's Spoils of War. And then it's uh, The Watchers on the Wall. I- I'm going to put them in that rank. That That rank could change. But right now, if I'm ranking significant, memorable battles in Game of Thrones history, uh, Spoils of War is third. It's third right now behind Hard Home and Battle of the Bastards. So there we go. Tell me in the comments which one you guys think. Uh, where do the battles rank? Uh, are there any more still to come? I would imagine there are probably in seven and at least in eight. So we'll get right back to uh, Season 7, Episode 5. And the marathon watch of all of the episodes of Game of Thrones will continue as we get ready for Sunday night's premiere of season eight.